This video will introduce two um, tests that we will use to characterize essentially relative minima and relative maxima. Um, so if you remember to do absolute minima and maxima, you use the candidates test. To do relative minima and maxima, you can either do the first derivative test or the second derivative test. This video will introduce you to both. Just a brief introduction as to why um, the first derivative test will work. Basically, let's say we have a relative maximum right there. Uh, and let's look at the first derivative as we do this. So notice that, um, let's call this x value c. Uh, and so notice that from like in negative infinity to c on this interval, that the function is increasing. See how f is increasing up like this? That means that f prime is greater than 0. So f prime is positive. Uh, and on the interval from c to positive infinity, notice that the function is decreasing, which is, means that f prime is less than zero, like this. Uh, and so that means that f is increasing up to c, and then f is decreasing away from c. So when we have a relative maximum, we're looking for the reason that f is increasing and it changes to f is decreasing. So we'll, we'll talk about that sentence in a second. The second derivative test uses a similar argument. We're still noting that x equals c is where the relative maximum occurs. Um, but in the second derivative test, we look at the second derivative of the function. This is a critical number because the tangent line slope is 0. And if we notice the concavity at this point, see how the function has this sort of concave down appearance. Well, a relative maximum, at a relative maximum, f double prime of c will be negative. OK, so this is how the, the uh, relationships break down. For the first derivative test, we say that f has a relative maximum. And remember that for a maximum, f prime has to change from positive to negative. So we say that these two are basically interchangeable. f prime has, no, 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 f prime changes, that's what I want, changes from positive to negative. And the opposite is true for a relative minimum, if you think about it. f prime changes from negative to positive. minus to plus. Very nice. And now for the second derivative test, we're looking at the second derivative. So at a relative maximum, f double prime is less than 0. And at a relative minimum, that means it's concave up, like that. So f double prime is greater than 0. Um, and something important to note, remember that relative extrema have to occur at critical points. Okay, all relative extrema must occur at critical points. And the reason for this was that a relative extrema occurs either when the derivative of the tangent line is 0 or the derivative of the tangent line is undefined, as in the case of things like y equals absolute value of x. To find and categorize relative extrema, we're going to use something that I like to call the chart method. Um, and this is a good way because it organizes everything that you need to know. So we're going to use the chart, and I'm going to go. I'm going to jump back and forth between a slide and, and, and an example. The first step of the chart method is to find all the critical numbers of f. Okay, so that's our first step. My example is this. We're going to start with y equals x squared plus 1 over x. Right, so step one is find all the critical numbers. Well, remember that a critical number is where the derivative is either 0 or the derivative is undefined. Okay, this is important. You do need to remember this, and you do need to solve for it. So we're going to find y prime. y prime, well, this is going to be a quotient rule. So we'll have uh, low d high minus high high d low, which is just 1, uh, divided by x squared, low squared. Uh, and let's simplify this a little bit. So y prime is going to be 2x squared minus x squared minus 1 over x squared. 
which simplifies even further to be x squared minus 1 all divided by x squared. Now, for y prime equals 0, the easy way to do this is to just set the numerator equal to 0 and solve that one. And then for y prime equals undefined, the easy way to do this is take the denominator and set at equal to 0. So essentially, whenever you have a to find critical values, set the top equal to 0 and set the bottom equal to 0 of your um, derivative. So we have the equation x squared. We'll do this in red to uh, stick with our colors. So the top, we set x squared minus 1 equals 0. So that means that x squared equals 1. So x equals, there are two solutions here, negative 1 and positive 1. And then for the other solution, we have x squared equals 0. So therefore, x equals 0 and 0. So those are our critical numbers. Great. What do we do with them? Well, we do step 2. Ta-da! Step two is to plot them on a number line. Draw your number line nice and big. Uh, so we have zero, we have negative one and positive one. Please put them in the right order. This is calculus, come on. Um, and okay, great, step two, done. Step three is you're gonna decide which test to use. Now, in most cases, you will actually be like told which test to use. Um, if that makes sense, or it'll be sort of obvious from the problem. As a general thing, the first derivative test is a little bit more common, but you do need to know how to do the second derivative test. So uh, we're going to show both. So in step three, we're going to make both decisions. Great. So we're going to do the first derivative test first. To start the first derivative test, we're going to take that number line, and we're going to transform it into the chart. Here's how we do that. We take our number line. And we're going to have uh, four things in our chart. We're going to have the intervals, so int. We're going to have a test value, test value for each interval. Uh, and then we're going to have the sign, not sign like trig, but S-I-G-N, the sign of F prime. And then we're going to have, is F increasing or decreasing? Okay, and the reason that we have to have all this information is because it's going to help us, it's going to, help tell us what the information is. Now, the um, blocking out for our, our chart will essentially be at each critical number, that will be the beginning and the end of each of the intervals. All right, well, our first interval, well, where does it start? Well, it never really ends. So the first interval is from negative infinity all the way up to negative 1. Now notice none of our endpoints will include the critical numbers, so it'll stop at negative 1 just like that. The next interval goes from open interval, negative 1 to 0. Then we have 0 to 1, and then 1 to, this one never ends, off to positive infinity. All right, now for the test value, you're just going to pick a number that falls within that interval. Um, and then we're going to do something with it. So what you do is you pick a number. So a number between negative infinity and negative 1. How about negative 2? That's an easy one. You want to pick numbers that are easy to plug in. Uh, for this one, we'll do negative 1 half. For this one, we'll do positive 1 half. And then here, we'll do 2. Now, for the sine of f, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our test value into the equation for... Um, f prime, or in this case, y prime. So if you go back here, recall that y prime was x squared minus 1 divided by x squared. So for the sine of f prime, you're going to do um, y prime equals x squared minus 1 over x squared. And now you, you sort of have to be a little bit not clever, but you can save a lot of time if you realize that you only have to figure out if it's positive or negative. You don't actually have to find the value of f prime, just if it's positive or negative. Um, and so for negative 2, if I plug it in, well, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. And then divided by negative 2 squared, that's a positive number. So I have positive 3 divided by a positive number. So f prime is positive um, on this interval. And I'm guaranteed that f prime is positive on this entire interval because it can't change. Because if it were to change, then the derivative would either be 0 or undefined. But it can't be 0 or undefined because we've already found all the critical numbers. So hopefully that makes sense. Just kind of think that to yourself a while. All right, now we have to do the other ones. So if I plug in positive 2, 
Uh, same thing, 2 squared minus 1 is 3. 3 divided by positive 4 is a positive number. Uh, if I do a, a, a half, a half squared minus 1 is negative. And if I divide it by a squared, squared is positive, so this is a negative number. Same logic for this one. This is also negative. So that is step, I think we're at what step are we on? 4? Sure, sounds like step 4. Yeah, because step 3 was decide. So step 4 is really set up the chart and figure out the sign of f prime. And then the bottom row is really easy because once we have the sign of f prime, we know whether f is increasing or decreasing. Uh, if f prime is positive, that means that f is increasing. I like to actually draw an upwards slanty thing, or you can write increasing. Negative means decreasing or decreasing. Uh, this one is also decreasing, and then this one is increasing. Hooray! Once we've finished our chart, we need to do one final check before we can actually write our answer. The final check is just to make sure that there is, in fact, a point at the um, x values that we are concerned with. So, first off, check it out. Right here, f prime changes from positive to negative. And so f is changing from increasing to decreasing. Um, and so what we need to do is figure out at negative 1 if there's actually a value there. So if we look at our original function, can we plug in negative 1? Yes, because the only value that makes this bad is x equals 0. Um, and so because negative 1 is not 0, then it works. So uh, it does work. Yay. Uh, and same thing with positive 1, if you plug it in, you do get a value. So that's the first check you have to do. Uh, and then we can actually write the answer. So here's the, um, the methodology behind the answer. Notice that at negative 1, we have a relative max, because f is changing from increasing to decreasing, so f prime is changing from positive to negative. And here at uh, positive 1, we have a relative min, um, for the opposite reason, in this case, f is changing from decreasing to increasing, which means f prime is changing from negative to positive. So here's the sentence that you must write in order to get credit. The first sentence is, f has a relative maximum at x equals negative 1 because f prime changes from positive to negative. Um, this is the justification statement that you must write. You will use it whenever you see, whenever you see the words justify your answer, um, or in my case, show how you know. Uh, so this will work for exams, for homework, for uh, the AP exam, etc. Um, and so you have to know how to construct the sentence, and you have to be willing to justify it using, ta-da, the chart that you constructed. So the chart helps you get to this to the sentence, and then the sentence itself is your final answer. For the second one, we would have a similar statement. For the relative minimum, we say that f has a relative minimum at x equals negative 1 because f prime changes from negative to positive. Uh, so going back to our, our steps, for the first derivative test, uh, after we decide that we want to use the first derivative test, we construct our chart with the test values, we do the sine of f prime, and then we figure out where f is increasing or decreasing. You can see those steps here. This is step four and five, basically. Um, and then that last step is to actually find the relative extrema on the chart. And so that's here when we say this is a relative max and this is a relative min. And then implied is step seven, which is actually writing the sentence, which is your answer. I did mention that there was, in fact, a second derivative test. Uh, and this one has its benefits and its disadvantages compared to the first derivative test. But basically, here's what you do. After you find your critical numbers and you plot them on a number line, then you decide to use, let's say, the second derivative test. So you go to your second derivative test, which is here, and you make a chart. In this case, we don't actually have to do the intervals. We just we can just list out the critical critical numbers. Um, the extra step that we do have to do is because this is the second derivative test, we actually have to find the second derivative. So let's go back to the function. That was our original function. That was our first derivative. For the second derivative, I'm going to use the quotient rule. So we're going to do low d high 
minus high d low, draw the line and square below, we get x to the fourth, and then I'll simplify the top, so we get 2x cubed minus 2x cubed plus 2x, these are going to cancel because they're the same, so we get 2x over x to the fourth, which is simplifying even more to 2 over x cubed. Okay, this is my second derivative. So now when I do the second derivative test, after I list the critical numbers, which is step four, uh, the second step of step four is f double prime of each of the critical numbers. And so all I do is just, I take the x value and I plug it into the second derivative. So I'm doing y double prime of negative one, which is two over negative one cubed. And just like when I was doing the sine of f prime, really all I care about is whether or not it's positive or negative. The bottom part is negative one cubed, so it's going to be over a negative number. Uh, so this is going to be less than zero. If I plug zero into y double prime, I get two over zero cubed. Uh, and if I divide two by zero, I get undefined. And then the last one, if I plug in two, or if I plug in x equals one into the derivative, I get two over one cubed which is clearly a positive number. And so, really, this is the extent of the seven, second derivative test. We find that f double prime is less than zero at negative one, and f double prime is greater than zero at, at positive one. Uh, so we need to go back and figure out what this means. So if we go back to the very beginning, we have the second derivative test. Oh, if f is less than zero, or sorry, if f double prime is less than zero, then we have a relative maximum, and if f double prime is greater than zero, then we have a relative minimum. So if I label these, uh, this is f double prime is less than zero, so this gives me my relative maximum, because remember, it's sort of counterintuitive, like a maximum should be concave up, because it's the top, but it's not, because remember, at a maximum, everything is concave down and sad. But at a relative minimum, that's when it's concave up and happy. So if you want to remember it that way, great. Uh, this is going to be our relative minimum, uh, and yes, there are sentences, sentences for these also. Here they are. When I do the sentence for the second derivative test, I'm going to add something, uh, and I'm going to say that not only is f double prime of negative 1 less than 0, I'm also going to say and f prime of negative 1 equals 0. Um, and this is just to reiterate the fact that x equals negative 1 is a critical point, and therefore that makes it a candidate for a relative maximum. Uh, because on this function there are, are lots of points where the second derivative is less than zero, but I'm just making it clear that I, I am also considering the fact that the first derivative has to be equal to zero. Uh, so the sentence for the relative minimum looks very similar. f has a relative minimum at x equals one because f double prime is greater than zero and uh, f prime of 1 equals 0. And actually, I could be more specific. I could say f double prime of 1 here equals 0. So if I go back to our steps, uh, step 4 for the second derivative test was find f double prime at each of the critical numbers uh, and basically determine if f double prime is greater than 0, equal to 0, uh, less than 0, or undefined. Uh, and then step six is basically the same thing, find the relative extrema, and write the answer. As a quick note, you might be asking, well, what about zero on your second derivative test? Uh, why does the derivative turn out to be, why does the second derivative turn out to be undefined? Well, that's because the original function, x squared plus one over x, is not continuous at um, x equals zero, and so therefore, we don't have any derivatives at zero being defined. So it's still important to include it because it is a candidate, but it doesn't turn out to matter because uh, the function is not continuous there.